So, yeah, I think this might be one of the most varied gaming grabs I think I've ever had. So hi again everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for pressing play once again. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you can hit that subscription button, that would be very much appreciated. And yeah, thanks again for joining me. So a Gaming Grabs video is what we have today. Um, this is all the sort of stuff that I've picked up over the last week or two, because um, I've not done a Gaming Grabs video for a couple of weeks. So um, there's quite a bit to get through. Um, and first of all, we'll go through, I think, the stuff I've picked up from CEX. Um, let's have a quick look at some footage from inside, I think it was Manchester Arndale's CEX. So here we are in CEX in Manchester. And like I've said, this store has been a little bit sparse recently. There's the Glass Cabinet of Dreams, N64 games in there. All of these are a little bit beaten up. Some nice PlayStation 1 games. Alien Resurrection there with its massive price hike really tatty a copy of snowbow kids as well which is a shame moving over to the xbox 360 section again not a huge amount here a lot of the same sort of games um one that did catch my eye though alice madness returns great game 20 pounds not a bad price for that i've got that but it is a fantastic game well worth picking up if you've not already played it PS2 section, again, sort of dwindling amount of games in this section. And we tended to see that in quite a few CEXs uh, over the last few months. There was actually a few more games in here than the, the sort of last time that I went in, but again, nothing really jumped out um, other than that Black and Bruised. Copy of Rogue Trooper there, that's another great game if you've never played that one. 3DS and 2D... Uh, Nintendo DS section here one game that caught my eye was this Kid Icarus Uprising 38 pounds for the 3DS box is really tatty normally behind a window that one though so that was a quick look around the CEX in Manchester Andale Manchester City Centre and that's becoming the CEX that I seem to be going in quite a bit recently because um, I've started to work back in uh, the city centre so every week I'm ending up having a quick pilgrimage up to the CEX there just to have a look and see what's in. Sadly I don't think that CEX is quite as well stocked as it used to be possibly not compared to like this time last year there seems to be a lot less in there um, but even so I've still managed to pick up one or two things two things today actually um, and then I've picked up a few other bits from CEX over the last week or two other CEXs this is um, and we'll go through those first so we'll start off with uh, what is apparently an absolute banger so this is a, a, a game series that I've not actually played yet I haven't played this game um, but I've been thinking about picking this up for a while um, and I did see it in CEX and thought let's give this a go finally it's pull the trigger and go for it and uh, it's Sly 2 Band of Thieves so I know it's the second in this series I haven't actually got Sly Raccoon the first game yet um, but I wouldn't mind picking that up as well um, but yeah looking forward to giving this series a go um, I've only briefly had a go of a Sly game on the PS Vita there's a demo for one of the games on there so um, I really liked it when I played it and I thought when I saw that, yeah, I'll pick that up. So Sly, Rec Sly 2, Band of Thieves. <coughs> uh, and then on the PSP, uh, that was £18 by the way. So that was a bit of a bit of a uh, stretch for me that one to, to pick that one up, but I thought it was worth it. Uh, next up on the PSP is Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. That was £4. Um, again, I've got most of the Ratchet and Clank games now apart from... I mean, there's quite a, a few on the PS3, um, so I'm still trying to work my way through picking those up as well. But yeah, uh, £4 on the PSP, nice and complete. The only thing with this one was it's got a slight rip on the uh, outer uh, outer box, um, so I'll just swap that up. But other than that, yeah, happy to pick that one up. Now, because it did have a rip on the box, I did look to see if I could find uh, a cheap PSP game that I could just swap the box out for. Um, and I went for the cheapest game I could find in there. It was only 50p. Um, sadly, I don't know how I missed it, but I didn't realise it was actually a um, classics PSP game. 
I don't know why. I think I was in just a bit of a rush. It was on my lunch break, so I was rushing to to pick something up. But it was only fifty p. Um, and then when I sort of grabbed it, I actually then realised and but still thought actually for fifty p, you may as well have picked it up anyway. And it's Pro Evolution Soccer Six. 50p on the uh, PSP, not a bad pickup. I'll just have to find a new box for Ratchet and Clank though, because um, I don't really want it in the silver silver case. Um, but yeah, I'll still probably give this one a go anyway. <clears throat> Next up is a game that I've seen a lot of people on Instagram talk about. I've seen a few people on YouTube talking about this game as well. Um, and a lot of people say it's really good. Um, it's a really cheap game. It's a PS3 game. And it's Conflict Denied Ops. And it was only a pound. Um, but a lot of people say this is really, really good. I've never played it before, so I don't know much about it. Um, but yeah, I've heard a lot of people say, especially for that sort of price, that that's worth a look. So yeah, I was happy to grab that one. Uh, nice and complete again. Nice condition. So um, yeah, interesting to see what that one's like. Could be a bit of a sleeper hit, that one, apparently. Uh, next up. Now... <clears throat> I am kind of at the point with my game collecting and my sort of gaming knowledge where it's very rare where I come across a game that I've a never seen before or b just had no knowledge of whatsoever. So this one is when I saw it in CEX, um, kind of surprised me because I I just had no I've never seen it out and about anywhere, um, and it is stoked on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. £2.50. It's a snowboarding game. I've not bought a snowboarding game for a, a fair few months now, actually. Um, but I do like snowboarding games. Um, but oddly, I've just never, ever heard of this game. So, yeah, quite happy to give that one a go and pick it up. Um, I think it's a little bit like Steep. I get the impression from the reviews I've read. Um, sort of a, almost like a, I don't want to say open world snowboarding game, but that's what it kind of sounds like. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Give that one a go. Stoked. And then my light is doing strange things. Please stay on. Um, the next two were just a couple of two cheap pickups, um, mainly from today, actually. I went into CEX in Manchester um, and was determined to find something. Um, but I did struggle, but actually one I'm quite happy that I've found and picked up. Um, but the first one is Underworld The Eternal War. On the PlayStation 2, that was £1.50. Um, yeah, nice and complete. Um, Underworld the movie, I don't mind it. It's okay. I, it's one of those films that you kind of watch and you sort of think, yeah, that's not bad. It could have been a bit better maybe, but um, I'm not sure what the actual game is going to be like. I think I probably have a fair idea that it's a sort of by the numbers movie tie-in. Um, not much to it, but um, for £1.50... Uh, you know, I thought I'll give it a go, just see what it's like. So yeah, it's Underworld, Eternal War. And then the second one, I wasn't 100% sure if I had this one or not, um, but I was pretty sure I didn't. Um, you, you tend to see this game quite a bit for the GameCube, actually. Um, but I've got the PlayStation 2 version, and it is black and bruised on the PlayStation 2. And that was £3, and I haven't got it thankfully. Um, it's a bit of a super punch out type game, um, but it looks a, lo looks a lot of fun um, and for three quid. Again, I don't see that around that often. Um, so yeah, quite like punch out. So I'm imagining that I will probably quite like this one too. Right. So next up, we've got um, some finds that I got at the car boot sale. Now I've not been to too many car boot sales over the last week or two, um, but I did go to one I think it was two weeks ago. Um, the weather's not been great, so it's it's never it's it's just not pulled me to go to the the car boot sales. Um, yeah, game wise, it was disappointing. Again, there's not a huge amount there. I'm obviously just not getting there quick enough before all the uh, sort of resellers are getting there. But that's you know that's up to me. If I wanted to do that, then I would have to get up a lot earlier, um, and I just don't want to do that. Um, but I did find a couple of things. So I was wandering around and a guy had some strategy guides on the floor and um, he actually had this one, Mass Effect. Now everybody who watches my channel will know I'm a huge fan of the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, so I did see that one and it looked, you know, it's in nice condition, um, but I did pass on it to begin with. Um, and so I carried on looking around the car boot sale and then came across another seller who was selling 
a couple of games, all sort of fodder, but he did have these two for sale as well. So it was Mass Effect 2 Strategy Guide and the Mass Effect 3 Strategy Guide. So what are the chances that, you know, just on that, that moment um, in one car boot sale that I would come across the three strategy guides from the Mass Effect trilogy? Um, so I had to pick these two up. Uh, and once I did, I went back to the first guy and picked up the Mass Effect 1 strategy guide as well. So for all three of those, it cost me, I think it was £4. Um, he wanted, quite, I think it was a pound for that one. Um, and then three uh, three pound for those two as well. So four pound for those three pretty hefty oh, and heavy uh, Mass Effect strategy guides. And I was quite happy to pick those up. I'm not one who sort of picks up strategy guides that often. So um, yeah, I'm not sure where I'll, what I'll do with them, where I'll put them, but just quite nice to have those so yeah that was my uh, the sole purchases from car boots for for the last few weeks and um, but i think i will be trying to go there this weekend and see if i can get a little bit more lucky so the next few games all came from um i wouldn't say it was my favorite place but it's probably my favorite game shop and um, this is the game that's in the Trafford Center in Manchester and um, as you know I, I go in there quite often and you know do get quite lucky in there and do find some uh, bargains Now you might remember on my last gaming grabs video um, I did have a little section in that video where I was talking about game um, and I did suspect that the games that I'd bought in that gaming grabs video from game might be the last games I sort of buy uh, from there but luckily enough um, that game seems to be getting a huge amount of pre-owned stock. So we know the game is stopping pre-owned games and they're trying to sort of sell off what stock they've got. Um, you're finding that a lot of the game stores in Sports Direct and some of the other uh, sort of high street shops are now uh, clearing out all of their pre-owned stock. And there's only seems to be a select few game stores now which are still stocking pre-owned uh, pre games. Um, luckily for me, the Trafford Centre still seems to be um, still stocking them so <clears throat> compared to when I went um, sort of at the beginning of whenever it was February or middle of February uh, where there wasn't a huge amount of stuff there but I did manage to get some really decent bargains there was almost double the amount of pre-owned stuff in there about two well this was going back probably about two weeks now but yeah the amount of stock that pre-owned stock that they got in there had pretty much doubled and um, there was certainly twice as much uh, Nintendo Switch stuff and um, there was a lot more PlayStation 4 stuff possibly not as much Xbox One uh, games in there but certainly PlayStation 4 pre-owned at uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 pre-owned stuff seemed to have doubled in size and um, so I've picked up another few bits from there as well so the first one I got was a Switch game for a change and it was Siberia for the Switch that was £2.98, but it was a bit of a fail. Um, so in my haste and you know, seeing that for £3, £2.98, I missed that it was a download-only code. So it's a code in a box, which I hate. Um, yeah, because I, you know, I'm a physical game collector. So yeah, it's a code in the box. So it's a bit of a fail, that one. But still, I suppose at £3, it might be worth uh, downloading it. Um, but yeah, I was a bit, I was a bit gutted, and I was kicking myself, and that I'd missed the, uh, missed that. Um, won't happen again. I'll know to look next time. But yeah, for three pounds, that didn't seem like too bad a buy. And then the next three I got in uh, three for two. So these were all pre-owned games, three for two, and they were all four ninety nine actually. Um, so I've effectively got the three games for a tenner, uh, which works out about. I don't know, uh, £3.50-ish something each, which is not bad at all. Um, so the first one is the Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Xbox One. Um, yeah, it's the second time I've got this. I do love the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, I've got all the original versions. I've got the uh, Legendary Edition on the PlayStation 4, uh, but now I've got it on Xbox as well. At that price, I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't leave it on the shelf. It just seems so cheap um, that, yeah, I had to grab that. So Mass Effect again. Uh, and then next was, so I've got a version of this on the PlayStation 4 already. Um, but again, once I saw the price for it, I thought I'll, uh, I'll get the upgrade 
physical upgraded version of it on the PlayStation 5. And it's Chorus. Uh, this is a bit of a sci-fi space shooter. Um, I have played it briefly, the PlayStation 4 version, and did quite enjoy it. I've just not had a chance to go back to it yet. Um, but yeah, I thought for a fiver, or less than a fiver, um, I'll get the PlayStation 5 version. The PlayStation 4 version, I think, still trades in for about £4 um, for a voucher at CEX. So practically getting my money back and getting the physical PlayStation 5 version instead so yeah seemed like a bit of a no-brainer but i do want to give this a go at some point so added to the uh, project playstation 5 backlog and i have done another one as well uh, another playstation 5 game <clears throat> this was a release game for the playstation 5 uh, it got a little bit slated on its release um a lot of people said it wasn't that great um but then i am sort of hearing now you know sort of two three years after some people actually saying well do you know what it's not actually that bad and if you can pick it up cheap it's you know it's worth a playthrough and and it is godfall um yeah i've seen it around cheap a few times i don't know if i've seen it quite as cheap as that um so like I say 4.99 into that three for a three three for two which knocks it just under that sort of five pound bracket um yeah it seemed like a, a decent a decent uh, idea to pick it up so I'm quite interested to give it a go. It says it's a solo or co-op next-gen looter slasher action RPG. So, um, yeah, I remember seeing it on the uh, sort of original PlayStation 5 uh, launch uh, trailers and uh, it always looked quite impressive on that, but yeah, it did get lukewarm sort of reviews when it came out. But like I say, some people now are tending to say, you know, if you can get it cheap, it's not... A, it's not bad and it's not worth a, it's, it's worth a quick playthrough so um yeah okay so the last few games uh and again like i say these are sort of quite varied from where i've put, picked them up and varied in uh the sort of gens that they were released on and the consoles that were released on i picked up a right mixed bunch this month or last this week i should say um so these were all from music magpie online and took a little bit of a gamble on one of them because it's a PlayStation 1 game. Um, I'm always a bit wary of buying PlayStation 1 games and having them posted out because you just don't know how they're going to get packaged and how they're going to arrive. Um, but this one was only £3.89, I think it was. It was either £3.89 or £3.29. I can't remember now. Um, but either way, it was less than £4. And I thought, well, I'll give it a go. It kind of paid off. There's no instruction booklet, which is a bit of uh, a bit of a shame, and the box has got a bit of a crack in it. But in general, it's arrived okay, and it is WWF SmackDown. Um, so yeah, a bit of a classic wrestling game for the PlayStation One, and um, sort of started off that whole SmackDown uh, SmackDown era of wrestling games. So it came after uh, WWF Warzone and WWF Attitude, which were two games that I just didn't get on with. I didn't really like them. I was more of a N64, No Mercy and WrestleMania guy. Um, but when SmackDown arrived, yeah, this, was, this wasn't this was that bad. Um, and the series progressively got sort of better and better, especially as it sort of hit the PlayStation 2 uh, era as well. So yeah, SmackDown classic uh, theme music for the tv show and the game as well so i can't wait to give to whack it in and uh give that a listen and uh, yeah give it a quick play so yeah not a bad buy box is all right shame there's no manual but it's not a deal breaker for me for that price uh the next one um i've been looking to try and pick up the gta games obviously gta 6 is on the horizon <clears throat> I think the, the prices of the GTA games are at some point, if not already doing so, are going to go through the roof. Right, maybe not through the roof, but I certainly think they are going to increase. This one has started to increase. I think not that long ago, you could get this game for about £4 in CEX. Um, I think it currently now goes for £8 in CEX. The PlayStation 3 version of this is up to, is it £10 or £12? So it, they are starting to, to go up a little bit. Um, so I thought I'm going to grab this one now while I can. Um, almost a bit of an investment kind of pick up in a way, I suppose. Uh, not that I'll ever sell it really, but it's uh, Grand Theft Auto Episodes from Liberty, Liberty City. So possibly not one of the more sort of well-known releases. Uh, it's basically the two sort of uh, DLCs for... Uh, 
uh, for GTA, the um, Lost and the Damned and the Ballad of Gay Tony. Um, I wasn't massively aware of it, but I had got the PlayStation 3 version. I posted that on Instagram, a picture of that, and it blew up. I did not realise just how popular that this game is. Certainly the, that PlayStation 3 version, anyway, um, and I'm assuming... Well, the Xbox 360 version is going to be more or less more of the same. Um, but yeah, it absolutely blew up on my Instagram account, that uh, picture of uh, the PS3 version. So I thought, well, if I can grab a copy of this as well, because it's obviously got some sort of cult following a little bit, um, I will do. And I got this for, I think it was £6.39 on Music Magpie. Um, so that is sort of quite a, a bit less than what it's going for in CEX at the moment. So it felt like a, a decent pickup, that one. So GTA uh, episodes from Liberty City. And then the last one from Music Magpie. <clears throat> um, there was no manual with this. Again, it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, I got this for £4.89. I think at the moment this sells at CEX for about £8. So again, you know, quid's in. This is a game which there would have been no chance I would have bought this back in the day um, because it just looked awful. All the idea of it felt awful. Um, but having now looked online and looked at some of the sort of retrospective reviews of it, it actually reviews quite well, um, surprisingly. Um, I, I was amazed at how sort of... Yeah, we were talking about sort of 7s out of 10s, 8 out of 10s, around that sort of mark, 4 out of 5, some places. Um, and it surprised me. So when I saw it for, for the price uh, on there, there was one copy, Impulse Buy, I thought, right, I'm going to grab this now and give it a go for myself. And it is Star Wars Super Bombard Racing. Um, very under the radar game for the PlayStation 2. I don't know a huge, I don't know anybody that's actually played it, to be fair. Um, what you've got here is essentially Mario Kart with Star Wars license slapped on top of it, I think. Um, but I've always, I've kind of always been intrigued by it. I've always thought, I wonder what that does actually play like. Um, so yeah, quite happy to get to get that and uh, add it into the collection. It's a little bit uh, rough and ready, the box. Still has its HMV price sticker on there showing 1999 Not sure what year that's from. Um, but it's, we're going back a fair few years, I think. Um, but yeah, it might need a new box. Hasn't got a manual, which is a shame, but the disc is all right. Um, so yeah, I, I'm quite interested to to give that one a quick go. And then my final pickup for this week, and probably my favourite of the lot. Um, I've actually put it into a box protector, so I'm just going to take it out of there first. Um, but I picked this up from a um, shop in Bolton, town centre, called The 151. I've showed, featured them on my channel before. Um, sort of relatively new shop in Bolton. Predominantly, they sell Pokemon cards uh, and trading cards and that sort of jazz, um, but they do have a few retro games. Uh, when I went in this time, they've had a bit of a rejig around of the store and it looks amazing now, um, but they haven't put the retro games out yet, but they did have a couple out on display um, and this was one of them. So I'm, I've kind of spoiled their uh, display a little bit, um, but I saw it, noticed what sort of decent condition it was in, asked how much they were looking for it. They offered, uh, they said, you know, a really fair price. There's no manual for it, which again, for me, is not a deal breaker because, you know, if you're getting it for a decently cheap sort of price, um, if there's no manual, I, I'm not that fussed. I'm not looking to resell it or anything like that. Um, but it is on the Super Nintendo, another Super Nintendo game, Mickey Mania. Um, so, yeah, the SNES is home to some amazing 2D platformers. Uh, this is up there with them, and I've never played it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. Um, I know there's a Mega Drive version as well, which I think, if I remember right, I'm sure there was some sort of issue with loading times on one version compared to the other. I think they were the main differences. I think there were some graphical differences as well. Um, but I remember them, I remember going back in the day and thinking um, or reading about loading times on one version. So I'm not sure if it was this version or the Mega Drive version that had the really long loading times, but, you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I've not played it yet, not tried it yet, so I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. I got this for £20, which I thought was more than fair. Like I say, you know, they kind of 
knocked it down a little bit because there is no instruction booklet with it again not a deal breaker for me particularly um and the box is in really sort of nice condition as well um so yeah really nice little addition into the uh into the snes collection which you know I've, I've really been sort of building that collection up again uh over, sort of since the start of the year actually so um yeah a nice new another addition to the super nintendo collection so those were all the gaming grabs from the last couple of weeks. I, I'm going to take all the labels off and clean them up a little bit and then let's have a quick closer look at some of those games. So like I say, they were the uh, the gaming grabs from this week, uh, and that was a quick sort of closer look at them as well. So I hope you enjoyed having a quick look through those games. Um, I've tried to sort of keep the this length for this video is down a little bit just to sort of keep them uh, within a, a time frame where people don't lose interest. I'm hoping anyway. But like I've been doing over the last few weeks with these gaming grabs videos. In midweek, I'll do a quick sort of gameplay video with some of these games, uh, and I'll open the floor up to you guys. You let me know which of these games you wouldn't mind seeing some footage of. Um, drop the drop the, the names of the games in the comments, um, and um, yeah, if uh, if you want to see that game, I will get that onto the gameplay video in midweek. So keep your eye out for that one. Thanks for watching this video as ever. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel if you can hit the subscription button as always very much appreciated uh, and i will see you for the next video thanks for watching guys